Um, so thanks for talking to me, to us, to the readers of the pool. Um, I saw the film last night and I really, really enjoyed it. Good. Um, I wanted to know um, what does sort of peculiarness mean to you and were you a peculiar child? Uh, what does that mean? Uh, yeah, peculiar means not ordinary, therefore extraordinary, mm. different uh, and I don't know. I mean, I think lots of people have felt a bit weird and, and, and peculiar, yeah. at least once in their lives. Uh, I was extremely shy as a child, so I felt a bit like an outsider. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just, you know, um, it's like the, the message in this movie. It's just, um, you know, how to live with your peculiarity mm. uh, and how to embrace it. And yeah. Um, another thing I noticed about your character who is just really, really finely drawn. I just thought about how easy it could have been for her to be like a, yes, she's very orderly and she shouts at everyone. It could have so easily have been that, of being just the, the, the lady who's the disciplinarian and be like a Miss Trunchbull character. But she was so nuanced and she had so much to her. I was wondering where that sort of, what, where that inspiration for her came from. What did you draw on for her? Yeah, the, I mean, the challenge for this character was exactly to have a lot of authority uh, but at the same time, you know, her children adore her. So mm. to find the right balance, you know, and especially in those days, 1940s, is you know, they, they, there was a, lots of respect between, you know, parents, children, and yeah. so she's she needs to be respected. The children needs to respect her rules, otherwise, they um, they could die. So that you know, it's it's all you know. Yeah, it's very. <laughs> So she's got a lot going on, that, that woman. She's got a lot, a lot of responsibilities. What, what, one thing that struck me about her was, I, started, I, I really got thinking of like, what must it be like to live the same day over and over and over again, which doing a press tour must feel like that. Indeed. <laughs> um, um, but if you were someone who lived the same day over and over again and how, how precise she was, she was very like, this is when we go for our walk. This is when we eat our meals. This is like, even though technically it shouldn't matter, um, you know, it shouldn't really matter when, when they do that because they're just living the same thing. What did you... Yeah, I mean, you know, if a child is late, you know, if he's not showing up at 4.43, uh, then it could kind of throw off her timetable mm. and it could mess up with the loop, you know, with the this kind of... Uh, how to describe a loop? That yeah. is the question. It's <laughs> a space and time where those children are safe. So it, it all has to be on time. Yeah. So that's why she's so tough with them, you know? It's just her like sense of like, even when she's not in control, she's in control. Like when, when um, I can't remember the name of the villain, but the Baron. Wonder White, yeah, when Baron arrives, um, she's like, no one, like I'm in control, but I'm not in control. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, as a, like as a mother, you cannot show too much to your children, I think, when you get scared, you know, when you find yourself in danger. So it's to protect her children, mm. you know, she doesn't want to scare them. Did you love scary films as a child? Yeah, Did you love I mean, being scared? I think children like to be scared, actually. I mean, yeah. as a child, I used to ask my mum to tell me a fairy tale every night, mm -hmm. uh, but it had to scare me. It had to yeah. end well at the same time, but I wanted a witch in the, in the fairy tale, you know, and otherwise it's not fun. It has to be, you know, scary, exciting. Uh, if it's too bland, it's not very exciting. Yeah, there has to be And real fairy terror. tales have all, they, there's always an element of danger in them. You know, mm. and um, no, I think it's important. Actually, it makes it whew, thrilling. Yeah. Th um. What do you think of like the notion that fairy tales? They're kind of like um, they're a woman's medium because they were they're told by women to their children. It's like the oldest sort of story that was kind of oldest form of stories that we have, and they're they they come from from women trying to scare their children to make them not go outside and not you know not put themselves in danger. You know. Yeah, and I also you know life is not you know, all wonderful and, and rosy. There are moments of darkness. So I think children kind of learn, are, are getting prepared to life with fairy tales. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have Bambi who was so scary. That was kind of traumatizing. Was that your big moment in your kid? Bambi is quite tough. I don't think people would, would be able to do movies like this anymore. But at least, you know, in, in Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, there is, it is scary. But it, you know, it's very Tim Burton, so it remains quite light, weirdly, and, and mm. funny and poetic. It's not just, you know. Yeah. 
So last question. Um, I, I always associate you with very like gothic roles and I like, you know, always sort of like, you know, Lace and being with Tim Burton or in your TV show is very sort of gothic as well. I'm wondering if that's a path, if that's a taste thing for you. You just love sort of that kind of material or whether you've just found yourself cast in those roles. Um, you know, I, I just, I'm drawn to characters that are quite complex and dense and not, I'm not doing movies just because it's supernatural. I don't really, you know, it's just, just for the sake of it. I just mm -hmm. like characters that are, you know, like quite ballsy, strong, but there's always, I like when there's a vulnerability, you know, behind yeah. it, uh, crack in the armor. Yeah. 